So last time we dealt with the ledger lines and ledger spaces of the treble stave. Today, let's do the same for the bass stave. Thanks to our two bass clef rhymes, we know all of these notes. Let's add on E, F, B and C. F is written in the first ledger space below the bass stave, just touching the first line, not overlapping it. And E is written below F on the first ledger line. Up top, B is written in the first ledger space above the bass stave, and C is written above B on the first ledger line. All pretty standard stuff. Fun fact though, this C is no ordinary C. We call it middle C. The same middle C we encountered in the treble stave last time. Middle C can be written like this or this, but sounds the same whichever way we write it. And this should hopefully give you some insight as to why we call this note middle C. It sits in the middle of the great or grand staff. It's also kinda sorta in the middle of the piano's keyboard and sorta in the middle of the human singing range. In short, it is a most noteworthy note. Don't forget it. And that is literally all there is to it. Bass stave, ledger lines and ledger spaces done. Music quiz! Here's a whole bunch of notes that spell out a word. Let me know in the comments below what you think that word is. Happy music theorying everyone. But some instruments play low sounds. The cello, the double bass and the lower half of the piano, amongst others. Because of their low pitch, low sounding instruments use a different clef, the bass clef. I wondered then, is there a note that is half the length of a crotchet? Is there a type of note that lasts for half a beat or count? Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to this little fella, the quaver.